Okay. So we want to actually, we know that my econ has picked up another company uh, that is uh, repairing and you have that opportunity to actually um, share your services with others and get paid. However, uh, I'm still feeling obligated to continue what we've always done. I am a credit repair specialist and I've been that since 2001. I have gotten great results from I would say about 95% of my clients who have come to me uh, since 2001, we have had some great success. And those that are in my econ that took what we have taught over the years have had great success in actually repairing and restoring their own credit. So um, one in particular, uh, Mr. Allen, who's on the call, I wanted to share just a little bit of the changes that he made that was uh, helping him that helped him actually finance his home. Ms. Lambert is another one that I taught uh, in the business when she came in. And I want her to share a little bit before we get started. Latresa Tatum is another one who attended the class and she actually worked on her own credit. And there were some things that happened that she has shared. Ms. Latoya Yarbrough is another one who has actually uh, took on the role of repairing her own credit. Uh, as we had taught it and has done a remarkable job in increasing her scores and gaining that credit power again. So, um, Chris, do you mind sharing just a little about what you may have done or run into since you were trained to actually take care of your own credit and uh, what happened for you? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, this is a uh, real talk about my credit uh, before I was introduced. Uh, with well, my econ and Miss Clarissa uh, through her uh, credit restoration uh, training, uh, I was on my way to Burge to try to you know get a car and house, and it just seemed my credit was uh, it was slightly okay, but there were some things I didn't know that I was not taught in school. You know, I'm a I'm a, a certified educator, a teacher for the school district in Arkansas, and just I was not able to afford a house. I couldn't even, I couldn't even get a loan for fifty thousand dollars, so I went to this. Uh, workshop uh, where they talked about the, how my econ strategies can help me increase my cash flow by applying those strategies uh, and, and doing my uh, software, which we, we call it a financial strategist. Uh, within, uh, after a year, I'm telling you, it didn't take long. A year, I was able to pay debt off. I was able to rearrange things. I started learning how, what does the creditors look for, how to pay my, you know, my, you know about paying a bill on time, you know, not just not just paying the minimum things, do, doing the necessary things to increase my credit. And I tell you, with that, after a year went by, I stayed faithful, I followed the plan, and I was able to get approved for over $100,000. And uh, I got a home you know, in my 20s uh, as, as a single young man. So I've just been thankful ever since then. I've been committed. Uh, and I'll tell you, people, I always share my testimony about just learning financial, uh, financial literacy is something that I was lacking because school is such a specific but attending this workshop and uh, sticking to my account principle, it, it really has blessed my life. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Ms. Lambert, would you share with us some of the things uh, I, once we talk our uh, credit class, um, what happened for you? Sure, glad to. Um, one of the things that uh, was taught that we should at least once a year review our credit report. Prior to this time, it has been years. I, I just didn't have any need, I thought, to even be concerned. I was able to just get whatever I wanted. Didn't understand really about the interest rate. Um, knew some bits and pieces, but didn't know all the details. Um, being in the class and being taught by Ms. Pace, we, she, as my representative, we were able to even go to court and win a legal situation um, by what was taught in this class. Uh, I had an attorney who turned tail and ran, who was trying to convince me that nobody <laughs> wins these kind of cases. Mm -hmm. And actually, we proved him wrong. So I encourage each of you. And also, I, I am doing credit repair now. 
I've been able to help some customers uh, to increase their uh, credit score by what I've been taught and how to manage some things and just um, just overall management of their credit, understanding how important it is to uh, know what's on your credit report, uh, value your credit score, and know how to accomplish the goal that you set. Um, so I'm asking and encourage each of you to please pay attention on tonight. All right, thank you, Ms. Lambert. I, I remember that I forgot about that part. I, I thought maybe uh, uh, about the identity, but uh, you made me chuckle right there because that is the truth. The attorney, the attorney did not believe that we could uh, win the case. So uh, we proved him wrong by the education that we had learned. All right. Um, I think uh, Ms. Latoya Yarbrough, are you able to hear us now? I can. Okay, we can hear you a little bit. Okay. Okay, I can hear you better now. That better? That's better. Since taking the uh, going through our credit education class and being a part of my econ uh, to actually do it yourself, tell us uh, the breakthrough that you've gotten with, with yours and your husband's credit. Well, for one, we went through bankruptcy um, before we learned. Okay, thank you. Did uh, she was a little? Um, I, I think it it went out a little bit. But did most of you all hear her testimony? Is that uh, they were in bankruptcy in Chapter Thirteen, and they were able to actually instead of staying in Thirteen for eight years, they they stayed in three years. We were able to take them out of that Chapter Thirteen, and then with twenty nine negative items, we were able to. Uh, turn the either delete those items or turn those items into the positive. So most of them actually the negative was deleted, and she was able to rebuild her credit. And now they are in a great position uh, and still growing. So um, that's exciting because we've got several scenarios of different people who have different things going on with their credit, and just being educated how to take care of it has actually changed their lives and their buying power tremendously. Thank you, Ms. Yarbrough. Um, Latresa Tatum, are you there? Okay, uh, can the rest of you hear hear me well? I'm here. I was on okay. Here. Okay, Latresa, uh, you actually, when you came to one of our meetings, uh, where we were, well, you, credit education meeting, and you were able to actually go in and work on your husband's credit and yourself and uh, make some changes and have some great results from that. Can you share a little bit of that with us tonight? Yes, when I was able to work on my husband's credit, um, we were able to do some of the off of his credit and then when he went to um, go in and get a, um, we were able to get a, get a truck after the first year. It was the first year after I started working on his credit, we went to get a truck. Mm -hmm. And after we got that truck, I, I was comparing the, every time we got a bill in, I was comparing the pay, 
the the pay the pay amount of that the pay whenever he paid in on his truck and it was showing to where he was actually paying down the interest rate and also paying the the amount of the truck was also going down the payoff amount was also going down so we wanted to pay off the truck we could have paid off the truck because the payout amount was also diminishing as well as the interest payment. So we were doing, we were able to, I say we were paying off the interest, the interest rate, rate was low enough for us to make a payment as we were paying off. We were also oh. able to pay off the truck at, a, at an earlier rate if we wanted to. Okay, so what you're saying is, what she's saying is, they got a better interest rate. When you have, um, most anyone can get a vehicle, um, even in bankruptcy or right out of bankruptcy, but you're going to pay the cost, uh, possibly uh, possibly 22%, up, it used to be up to 22%, 14 to 22%. In other words, when you pay your car note, you're going to be paying more interest than you're going to be paying on the principal. So what happened to Latresa, when she was able to go in and work on her husband's credit, as we had taught in the class, uh, she was able to get a better interest rate. Therefore, she's paying more on her principal and her interest is lower than what they would have had in the past. So thank you so much, Latresa, for what you have shared. With that in mind, I want to um, go ahead and go into the class uh, training tonight. I'm going to pull up my presentation right here and get started. Uh, we are recording, so associates, you'll get a chance to go back that are not here. you get a chance to go back and listen. But I'm excited because, as I told you before, I've been doing this since 2001. I am certified, a certified specialist uh, when it comes to credit repair. Uh, a lot of people um, which have different reasons that they have actually their credit has, has gone lower or they may be bruised in certain ways, uh, but we do have an option to recover from that. One of the things of a credit repair organization that we cannot state to you, we cannot ever state to you that, that poof and everything is gone. Uh, we cannot tell you that um, we're going to change your social security number and then you, you know, and give you new credit. But there's a lot of things that we cannot state and cannot guarantee uh, legally because there are different kinds of laws and, and different perspectives to go, go from. But basic information for you and your family when it comes to your credit will actually help you recover, okay? You'll see my first slide here that says there's stewardship, and I'm, I'm hearing some noise in the background, so uh, who's ever moving papers or anything else? Um, probably need to mute your phone. Okay, thank you so much. Um, stewardship is a lifestyle. And unfortunately, there are many uh, Americans who have lived a very poor lifestyle. Now, there are people who don't want to admit to it. But, and it's okay, because what happens is, this is what my econ is all about. We have not had financial education before. Some of us have looked up, uh, I was telling someone the other day how my grandmother used to tell us that your name meant something. So she would actually tell us to have good credit. As as much as she knew, she knew to save and have good credit. And she would say, your name means everything. If you make a promise, you need to keep that promise. If you go somewhere and you borrow something, pay it back. And she was such a stickler on that, stickler on that, that if, Anytime we borrow some money from my grandmother, I would actually have to have, she would give us an invoice. And if you were late, you would get a late notice. Uh, she did that <laughs> to us. So uh, what it adds up to, even if it's an emergency, because some people say, well, I, you know, I didn't know that I was going to get a divorce. I didn't know I was going to get sick. I didn't know, um, you know, I was going to lose my job. What happens is they're still listed as poor stewardship because when we budget for life, and this is part of our cash flow strategies training, when we budget for life, 
we are we need to include emergency funds and uh uh, we need to include vacation funds, things like that. That's a true budget for the things that you are looking forward to in your future. You got a budget for it. So we have money habits and money practices and money philosophies that have really torn up a lot of us, and I'm me included, uh, when it came to practicing our stewardship. That just means managing, okay? What does this have to do with your credit? Well, bad credit again, is due to our poor money practices. Some of us, uh, when we budget, instead of paying first things first, we go get what we want and we don't take care of our needs or our first obligations. Then we have uh, poor habits, poor money habits. Uh, that's part of a habit, but we like sales and we'll go see a sale, but then what if the light bill is due or you already have a credit card that you've already run up and then you go run up another one and you can't pay it off and you allow that balance uh, to get out of control and you're paying the minimum payment instead of paying that whole debt off. And then, of course, some philosophies like I've had heard a lot of males say this. I work hard for my money. I ought to have what I want to have. Well, the thing of it is you can have what you want to have, but it makes sense to have it right because you're not going to be happy if you can pay for your entertainment but you can't pay for your necessities of life that's crazy so on the other half um it's due to unforeseen circumstances we don't expect some things to happen to us in life but they do and now that we're here we got to redirect our thinking uh to uh be a positive thinking and use positive methods like we are teaching in my econ to get you to a better place okay now now we're here though what do we need to know the first thing you need to know is you have a legal right to change your condition as much as i want to share that with you on those other two slides i still don't want you to feel bad about where you are know that nobody has a legal right to take your stuff without you understanding why without the laws governing you for them to do only so much that's just not right you have a responsibility to get control of your credit. You are protected by the law, which is the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which was created in 1971. See what the history of credit is, uh, experience is the oldest credit report, a credit bureau there is. And what happened is that experience is big business. It's big business. There's not a bank in this country. There's not a company in this country that is made to carry the credit bureaus to check you out. This is a choice. These people got together because it was kind of like I compared to the economic recession and the mortgaging. During this time, uh, there was no regulation of people borrowing money and no guarantee that they would bring it back or you knew if they were trustworthy. So there were some masterminds that got together and say, we could put together a type of system that will actually bucket our people, uh, uh, put them in groups that will say whether or not they are good, they have good credit, they have fair credit, they have bad credit, and then you pay us a certain amount of money, either annually or monthly, and we will share that information with you, and you can make a decision whether they should come to your banks and get loans or not. So what happened was uh, that got out of control because there was no regulation to say what was accurate and what was inaccurate. And believe it or not, there are people that are recorded that kill themselves. And you know they got to be high-minded people that actually kill themselves because they had bad credit because it, it can't, and the stuff was inaccurate. So the law, the Federal Trade Commission got involved. And when they got involved, they came up with the Fair Credit Reporting Act that says there are only things that you can report has to be 100% accurate. And if they are not, you either have to correct it or you have to delete it, okay? So that is kind of tough because once it's out there, you've got to prove the inaccuracy in everything that is wrong, okay? Now, here's the difference, okay? The price we pay for bad, poor, or fair credit. Ben and Sydney, let's compare them. Ben has a FICA credit score of 720, and that's an excellent credit score. But Sydney has a FICO score of 650, a fair to poor credit score. 
Let's look at a scenario where both of these guys are buying a $20,000 car for 60, on a 60-month loan. Ben takes out 4% interest rate, okay? His payments are only $368.32 a month. Cindy takes out an 18% interest loan, and her payments are $507.87 a month. Now, Sydney is going to pay $8,672.40 more for the same $20,000 car. Now, let's take a look at another example where Ben and Sydney both buy a home, and it is $150,000. Ben's interest rate is 5%, and his monthly payments are $805.23 a month. Sydney's interest rate is 10%, but her monthly payment is $1,326 a month, okay? That's going to be, in the long run, a $184,006 difference in the pay, okay? So it does matter whether you have bad credit, poor credit, or fair credit uh, when it comes to your interest rate. And it used to be that 650, oh, it was great. But because they changed the scoring system, uh, listen, I told you this is big business and these guys compete out there. And what they have done is they come up with a Vantage score. We used to have just a FICO score. That's the Fair Isaac and Company uh, score. Uh, where it's algorithmic system and everything is calculated within that. But then they turned around and they got some competition and that's where we got TransUnion, Equifax, and now uh, Vantage Score is a part of what is scoring us. And that meant they went from 800 being the top score all the way up to 900, okay? So when they did, again, y'all, that gave people the legal right to charge us more because I believe they did it because consumers are getting smarter about the, the accuracy of their report, and so they're doing something about it. You can see right here on this scenario, 500 to 589, and these are some old interest rates. Uh, they they tend to be a little bit lower now since Obama has been in office, excuse me, President Obama. But you can see it's still a difference here. At 720 and 850, score is going to get you a major difference in your monthly payment and your interest rate. And then when you come right here, 500 to 589, interest rate is 14.6. The payment's 472, 720 to 850, that's 7%, 397, and that's a $775 monthly difference. And what I generally like to say is that $75 can make a difference in paying off your other debt or investing. So it's important that when we start doing this, we, I guess we would be mentally smart about it because there are a lot of people, customers that I run into that want to buy a house, they want to buy a car, they want to do it right away. Uh, but there are some times when you need to wait until that score has grown to where you can get the best interest rate, unless you're walking. Now, if you're walking and you just need to grin and bear it, go right ahead. But there is an opportunity that I share with people where you can, uh, pay your before your cycle date you can lose some of the interest rate but we'll talk about that on one of the other sessions we're going to get to that okay now this is what you should know you should know there is no law requiring bad credit to be reported the credit bureaus do it for making money you should know that the fair credit reporting act ensures that your credit reporting agencies report your credit accurately and this has been since 1971 as i have already stated it has been reported that 70 percent of all credit reports have errors on them costing consumers hundreds of millions of dollars in higher interest rates and some of us are, are witnesses we do understand this process now if even if you have just one negative item this is the difference it could make thousands of dollars when it comes to either renting a home or it's uh, you know, that's that's gotten really major is that you have to have your credit score just to, just to get an apartment. OK, uh, then you have to have your credit pool for your uh, insurance, your car insurance. And so it just makes a major difference in what we're trying to do and our buying power. And in my econ, what we're trying to teach us, one of these one reason we want to get you credit ready is because your goal is to get to investing. The more cash flow that you have released, the better your option of investing and the better your future will look when you retire, okay? Now, 
These are some acts or some legal things that you should know. Uh, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, all you have to do is type this in, uh, because remember, we empower you to do this yourself. Go type in the Fair Credit Reporting Act on your um, internet and go read it. Go look at it. Uh, you can go to Federal Trade Commission, that's FTC.gov, and take a look at it and see what they do for you. You can go to the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. That is an act, uh, a law that that um, regulates how junk debt collectors can come after you when you have allowed a debt to go unpaid. Then you got, of course, the Federal Trade Commission, in which I have just stated, it's FTC.gov. And these are your friends. They protect the consumers. You can go there. You can see different junk debt collectors in which they have sued on the consumer's behalf. If you have a complaint about uh, someone harassing you, uh, they can't call you at a certain time. They can't call you on your job uh, without your permission. And then there are statutes of limitations that govern uh, the debt and how long they can collect from you. Those things are listed on the Federal Trade Commission, okay? And you, I mean, it is an awesome website and they will actually talk to you, okay? Now, uh, we're gonna go into what is a credit report. And then I'm gonna take some, once I get through with this, I'm gonna stop this so we can pick up. I wanna take it little by little and get some questions, okay? Uh, tonight on just this part, because we got a lot of things, a lot of time ahead of us, two more sessions ahead of us. What is a credit report? Well, your credit report is a way for your financial institutions to know your credit worthiness. We have stated that there are three credit reports. That's TransUnion, or credit bureaus. That's TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, okay? There is another credit company that's actually coming up that you need to be aware of, and that's Innovis. That's I-N-N-O-V-I-S dot com, okay? These people are, they, there's what you call a hidden score that is the uh, bank called bankruptcy score, where you have um, a high score for a regular FICA score is the best rating you can get. You actually want a low score when it comes to your bankruptcy score. This is how a lot of things are hidden. Even people who don't have bad credit per se uh, can get a number one, a number five, I'm sorry, on their bankruptcy score, and then they can be denied a loan. Here's why that happens. They're saying, are these, do these people have enough debt open and have enough, uh, have high balances on their credit, whether it's a car, home, or credit card, and are, is it possible for them to go bankrupt? So they're gonna score you on that. Uh, that's not revealed to us as a consumer. This Innovis is out there in the market, and I got some information about them before. Um, I'm with a, a credit company that shares uh, webinars and trainings with us, um, and they were sharing information that Innovis is uh, moving fast to get the business from the bank. And so you need to go there to make sure that your information with them is accurate as well. And they're not, they don't want you to, they're, they might tell you that they don't have it or whatever, but as a consumer, you need to talk to them until you take care of whatever report, whatever reports they got going on, you want to be active with them as well, okay? Uh, now, what is a credit score? A credit score is created uh, through algorithmic scoring. This system comes from Sir Isaac Newton, who was a crazy scientist. So you already know some crazy figuring going on here. Uh, so what happens is 35% of your bill payment history makes a difference in your score. That means how you pay uh, your bill, okay? If you are a person who don't mind paying bills late, then you're definitely gonna have a very low score. Uh, but if you pay your bills on time and you pay them before the cycle date, you will actually get an opportunity to continue to boost your scores if you would pay your bills on time. Whatever credit that you have that's being reported, make sure it's paid on time. And if you can pay it early, make sure it's paid early. If you can pay uh, extra on like the principal, do that and it makes a major difference. That's 35% of your score. 30% of your score 
is on the amount that you owe. Okay, like the um, debt to credit. If you have a credit card and your limit is one thousand dollars, but you have nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents on it all the time, then that's still going to give you a low score, even though you're paying the minimum payment. So some people's issues when it comes to their credit score is simply that they need to pay their rolling credit down. They need to pay it 38% below the credit line before you go and try to make any type of purchase. You should prepare for this. Then 10% is the length of history. Like for instance, uh, if you've been, um, if you've been mm, say had a credit card for, I'm sorry, 15% is the length of history. Say for instance, you had a credit card for five years. Uh, that's good. Or you've had it for 15 years. It's going to give you a good rating because you've been you've been holding that credit for a very long time. Opposed to a person who's just getting started, that person, it is very possible that that person will still be scored lower until they can gain some history. Now, here's the deal. It does not matter what amount is on that card. It can be $20, $50, or $10. As long as this combination is done, then you can continue to be rebucketed. See, here's the situation when we talk about bucket. You are grouped right now. If you have late payments and say you have eight um, late payments, okay, on your credit cards, you have eight credit cards and all of them you always pay late. Well, you're going to be in a group with people, millions of people who are scored a certain way because they have eight late payments. Now, by the time you change that, say over the course of three to six months, then what happens is you get put in another group and that gives you an opportunity for your score to increase because you're getting better at paying your bills on time, your uh, debt to uh, income ratio, your debt to limit ratio is going down and the amount on the cards or whatever it is, is going down. So you get a chance to go in a better group, a better scoring group, okay? And it changes things. Then 10% is with your new credit. And of course, the credit bureaus can tell, they have an indicator that can tell whether or not you are with a subprime lending company or you with one of the companies that is uh, that gives out prime lending. Like for instance, uh, you might have a Chase slate card. That is for people who have great credit, great credit history. You know, uh, you get a chance to get American Express card, uh, that kind of thing. That's why people like to flip it out with attitudes. They're like, hey, I, you know, I got my American Express. Now, I, don't, I, I have to be Rockefeller to have an American Express because they stay on 30-day term and I just be feeling like if I can pay some in 30 days, I don't need American Express. But anyway, uh, that's that's one of the cards uh, banks that they just love to you know give out to people great credit. And then the other is ten percent is on the type of credit that you use. Okay, new credit and the types of credit is combined in there. And any time that you start being late on something, you're gonna actually lower your score, and it could possibly be fifty points per hit. So you can recover. You just need to have enough time to do that. In, okay. Um, your consumer rights. This is section 611 out of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. It reads, if the completeness or accuracy of any item of information contained in, in this file in his file is disputed by a consumer and such dispute is directly conveyed to the consumer reporting agency by the consumer, the consumer reporting agency shall within a reasonable period of time reinvestigate and report the current status of that information unless it has reasonable grounds to believe the dispute by the consumer is frivolous or irrelevant. If after such reinvestigation, uh, it is found to be inaccurate or can no longer be verified, then guess what they have to do? They have to delete. In short, it means that every item on your credit report must be proven or be removed or deleted. So it is possible to remove late payments, charge offs, uh, or to change, judgments, repossessions, medical bills, telephone bills, evictions, identity theft, closed accounts, bankruptcies, negative settlements, collections, liens, auto loans, and student loans. And the only, what we're saying is, you, you, you want to uh, 
remove these items or you want them updated to show that um, you have paid them if that is the truth, okay? So we've got to do what's necessary. And I can say that we've had great uh, success. I think we had a lady, I had one of my clients who had, oh man, she had like 27 hatch links, 27. And we actually got all of them updated. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it had killed her. Once it got on there, it had killed her score. But we were able to get all of those links updated um, and show a positive so that she could actually um, she could actually rebuild around that, okay? And then some were deleted. But there are some things that, that you want to leave on there, and we'll talk about that later when we get to the actual credit report. So we're going to stop right here uh, with the training and uh, take some questions for now. Okay, I don't want to overload you tonight. Do we have any questions? You all can come back in. If you're muted, hit star six and come back in. Um, Ms. Pace, there is something that I want to add. Uh, you sure. were talking about removing or updating. Uh, yes. If that happens, does your score go up once uh, they remove it or update it? Uh, it depends on what it is. Now, uh, public records would generally, if, the, if you do have liens and public records moved, your score would increase. But your score could possibly decrease if it is deleted because you lose history, okay? And once you mm -hmm. lose history, you got to rebuild. So what I did was, and this is my own system, and we have the choice as credit specialists to, to, to see what we, we can do with people uh, because there's no one way to get something done. I generally like to share with people to do, uh, do it kind of like a, uh, you know, that balance scale? Like as you, if you're at a point where you can rebuild, yet you can be deleting, you can avoid that. You can already have in place a brand new item that's giving you a positive reading when that one drops off and you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And some and sometimes we, we get an opportunity to do that. Okay. Is that helping? It did. It. See for Thank you. like for instance. When, you, when you're doing your credit, also it's going to depend on what you're trying to do. Um, there are, because I've been a mortgage loan officer, I know what underwriting looks for. So if you, even if you have things on there, they're going to count so many items that are negative that could stop you from getting a loan. Even if you got, like they know when people go in and say, I want a house, so I go pay off my 10 negative items and I get them updated that, you know, I paid them. And, and by this time, they're with junk debt collectors anyway. So mortgage loan officers who don't know anything about credit will tell you to go pay all of this stuff. And it doesn't give you a new score at all. And it depends on how many is on your credit report as to whether underwriting will allow you to be pre-approved for a loan anyway. So the direction that I work from on that end is that uh, if we can get you balanced, and, and, and cosmetic, I'm going to say I work from a cosmetic point of view. When I know what you're looking for, when you know you're trying to get a house, you want your credit report to look as tidy as possible, okay? Because that could still show that you're unable to manage your debt and you just did it to get this loan, which you could possibly default on if you practice the same habit. Because see, all that date when you paid and stuff is going to be on there. Mm -hmm. So I like to know what my uh, clients, and, and it's good for you all to know, what what are you looking to do? Okay? Okay. okay. Any other questions? Y'all, this is the place to have it. Don't be shamed with an eye had bad. I mean, let me tell you, uh, we were we went bankrupt now, might be 17 years ago. You know, if I'd known now, what I knew then, I would not have because I knew how to control things. But me, I my, I told you, I've been taught by my grandmother. So when I got married, me and my husband had two different philosophies going on here. And it just blew my mind to get something late in the mail. I didn't want my lights, gas, and water to be turned off because 
I had gone through that as a child. Uh, I was a beast about that. Like, where's the money? Where do I get this light bill? <laughs> you know, and then if I got a letter in the mail, somebody trying to sue or take or garnish, man, that was like throwing me like crazy because I'm I'm thinking, this ain't what you're supposed to do. This is what grandmama said. And I bought the only, you know, so we tried to practice what grandmama said <laughs> and uh, take care of things. So uh, it didn't happen. We were young. And so we've taken care of things and have different philosophies and a mindset now. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. You guys have a question, go ahead. I uh, we got about I'm gonna give you about ten more minutes or five. Go ahead. I got a two part question. Uh okay. first part of the question is, uh, what about these companies that go out and buy debt and they're like, Well, if you're having a card with someone and they'll go out and they'll purchase the debt, then they'll try to get the money from you. Uh right and make some type of arrangements with you or whatever. How does that right. benefit you by paying them if you couldn't pay the first, the people in the first place? You, well, does it, it really doesn't, it really doesn't benefit you. Again, it's going to depend on your purpose of why you are trying to restore your credit. Okay. Um, and your patience, what happens with you talking about, and, and that's going to be on our third training to show you guys, uh, you're talking about a junk debt collector. That's what they're considered. Even a, and they have laws. They are regulated by the Fair uh, Debt Practice Act, Collection Practice Act, okay? Even if they are an attorney, they come under the same laws. Just because they have attorney at law behind their name does not mean that they don't come under the same laws. So what happens is they buy your debt a penny on a dollar. And then when they call you, they try to get you to respond, yes, that that is your debt. The first thing you don't do, because you don't owe them, because you don't have a contract with them, you don't admit to owing the debt with them. You can verify they're going to be on the phone. How are you clear space? Yes, I am. Do you live at 522? Yes, I do. Is your telephone up? Yes, it is. Well, we have a debt from Sound and Spirit that we would like to collect your, uh, is $50, and we would like uh, to know how you want to pay that today. Uh, excuse me, now, who is this? This is uh, oh, National Collection, whatever. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't owe a debt. I don't owe a debt with you. Uh, oh, well, see, we have, you just said you, uh-huh, I am, this is who I am, and no, I don't owe a debt with you. Thank you. And then you hang up. Now, if you got some things that's hanging out there and say you want to buy a house because I got people that are impatient and they don't have an all-around perspective on finances and management that come to me, they want their house in six months, okay? They want their house in 12 months. So then I recommend that they will go to the, the junk debt collectors that are on there and see if they can negotiate a settlement. Score-wise, you have to have several of them paid just to get one or two points out of it. But cosmetic-wise, uh, it's, it's good to have the account paid off, okay, so that you don't have any open debts because that will be calculated to your debt-to-income ratio. And then also what happens is that um, uh, you can ask them for a deletion settlement, and if you've got the money and you can pay them, then uh, negotiate a deletion settlement, get it all in writing, don't give them your information until you get everything in writing, and then they will delete it. Now, does that mean it's going to give you a score? No, it's not. But at least cosmetic-wise, it won't be out there. Okay. okay. Ready for the next part? Sure I am. Shoot it. Um, <laughs> what is the, uh, I need to get the 411 on the seven-year myth about if they don't get it within seven years, it's, uh, is there any particular time? What is it about that myth that a lot of people tell you that uh, after seven years they can't bother you or something like that? Have you ever heard that one before? Do you know what I'm referring to? I think I do. I think you're doing it in two different two different ways. First of all, let me talk about the statute of limitations. And all of you can go type in uh, statute of limitations on debt. You need to know. Uh, the things that go with that, um, because you got, oh, it's so, wow, I forgot some of the names of them. I was going to talk about that later, but you got a lot of things that go on with that. 
there's a statute of limitation that says that a debt cannot be collected on after so many years, depending on what category it's in. That's whether it's a promissory note, uh, verbal contract, uh, uh, open end account, which are credit um, credit cards. And there's an argument now that those credit cards are contracts, which may carry longer on a contract than it does on a credit card. And they're governed and regulated statewide, meaning that in Arkansas, an open-end account, uh, they, they are not to collect on the debt after five years. And that term starts on the date of the last activity. That's not the time in which you had the card and was paying it. That was the time in which you stopped paying and never paid again. And that is five years for open-end accounts like credit cards, okay? So what happens is you have to know your business because junk debt collectors will go in and buy those debts and then they will restart the clock, what you call restarting the clock, when you make an agreement to pay them or you are on the phone and you say, yes, that's me. And I mean, yes, that's my debt, okay? And that is one statute. The next one is, you have seven years that an item can be reported on your credit report and it can be deleted or it can be updated, okay? So what happens is if you got long-standing credit that has been on there, I would not recommend that just because the seven years is up on it to be on your credit report that you ask for it to be deleted. You want to leave that on there. But if you have something on there that's as past the seven-year statute to be on the credit report, then definitely that's one of the areas that you can uh, clean up. It'd be good to get it taken off, okay? On bankruptcy 13 and 7, they carry a different statute and different limitation on 13 and 7, okay? And, uh, but there are some things that can be done about those as well. I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that so we can have a full organized conversation about it on our last week. But does that help so far? Oh, it helps tremendously. I just uh, wanted to get some clarification. You know, you can, okay. ask, uh, you can always tell the ones who have a debt issue because they got about 20 questions. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Yeah. I can guarantee you it's probably somebody else on here that just no. ain't talking. Just don't want to ask the question. <laughs> just don't want to ask uh, the question. I have one more uh, <laughs> situation. Now, you have to be careful. What I what I uh, came under a lot of pressure in the past. You have to be careful about when these. Uh, I think with our cell phones being public now or no, something or that something. you can get a lot of <laughs> harassing phone calls where people threaten you to. But if you don't pay us, we're going to go down to your local district attorney and file charges and things of that nature. So you have to be careful of that uh, nine days also because everything's a public record. And when people call you uh, on the phone, uh, they can even make it sound like there's an office in the background or something like that. And they start threatening <laughs> you to do this and they try to pressure you into uh, making some kind of pressure, uh, uh, payment arrangement with them and uh, things of that nature. Uh, and see, here's the deal on that. Uh, that's why it's important to understand uh, what you need to do in the event that they call you. Don't want to throw it out tonight. I'm going to tell you about that when we get to the point of what do you do now, okay? Uh, but there are things that you can do. And then you must understand that um, the the some of the creditors themselves are not the ones that's putting this in the court. They hire people to go around and pick up your information. That's why you'll have a credit report that might have uh, one thing on it and then it doesn't have it on the other one. And that's because, and especially when it comes to public records, because they're paid for people that go through the court systems that pick this up and they may or may not report it, okay, to all three bureaus. And you will have different scores depending on which one they reported it to. So that's another thing. If you can get your credit scores to be even across the board, that's what we try to do. Okay, but yes, they will try and trick you. But the key to that <laughs> is if you're if you, that debt has been charged off, you already know the original debt is not calling you. Do not have a conversation on the phone with them. And if they could do a whole lot when they send you the letter and, and it says in 30 days, we need you to respond. Well, have you ever had a letter and it ended up being a whole year? If they could do anything about it, 
they would have done it in 30 days. So they didn't because it doesn't belong to them. They got to get you to respond to them and admit that is your debt. Okay. And then the Fair Practice Debt Practice Collection Act, I'm getting it all messed up now. It's late, but that act protects you, okay, from those phone calls. That's why it's important to go and look that up, read those things, you know, review them yourselves and see what your consumer rights are and how you are protected. Because, yes, you don't have to be, yes, go ahead. Hello? Yes, I'm here. Oh, Miss Pace, um, I got a question. Um, sure. Now, with my husband, he has equipment that he's bought and personal things, and they'll always tell him, okay, well, it's okay. It's just that you have a lot of things on your, you know, showing that you're paying for. Mm-hmm. Should that be separated from uh, what he buys for what he does for work and his personal information? Yeah, that's a whole nother ball game because that's when you need to have your personal credit separated from your business credit, which you would separate it by by different statuses like LLC, corporation, S corporation, partnerships, things like that that will separate the personal things. I had a client who was a trucker. And everything that he get, he got it in his name. So he was paying, but he was overweighted on his credit report. So the things that he wanted personally, he could not obtain. Also, there is a, oh, Holy Ghost. Oh, Dun and Bradstreet. Dun and Bradstreet. Dun and Bradstreet is another option that, that business owners like farmers, truckers, and myself and different ones, we can get a Dun and Bradstreet uh, number. And then we could also pay for their services to build us credit on the business side so that we could lose having um, so that we could lose having all of those purchases under our personal credit. So we'll explore that on a personal note, okay? I don't teach that in just in my econ, but if you want to have a conversation about it and we can get some direction, we'll do that, okay? Okay. Okay, but yes, that's that's an that's that's an issue there. Okay. So, Any other questions? Well, Carissa, yes. I have a question. Okay. The item, say for instance, you identify that to be your debt and you pay it off, but it's still on your credit. Okay. Then it doesn't mean because you pay a debt off that it's removed. Okay, uh-huh. if it's you're, you're saying if it was a junk debt collector and you paid it, uh-huh. you're, you're saying, you know, they still have it on your credit. That's a misconception that a lot of people get. I uh-huh. really don't know where it comes from, but just because you pay it does not mean it has to be deleted. What it should do, uh, it should be updated to say that it was paid in for it's going to say paid to, if it's a settlement. It's going to say paid settlement, okay? Uh-huh. So it needs to say that if 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 anything. But, um, no, it does not mean that it's going to come off just because you pay. And don't let anybody tell you that. You have to actually negotiate a, a um, deletion settlement on those to get an agreement that they will delete it. Okay. Now, there are other things off this call that we can probably manage to do to make some things work. <laughs> no okay. I'll run into that personally I will get you yes did someone else say something I thought I heard Miss Lambert say Miss Pace you need something but we could be here all night with uh, credit so I'm going to be quiet <laughs> <laughs> okay I'll write you guys know, I wish I would have got into you I mean I wish I would have known you about 20 years ago I'd be it'd be outstanding but I know you now, so I'm I'm just eternal. Well, <laughs> well, it's, it, it's it's your season. It's just your season. That's all. All right, you guys. Well, I'm I'm done for tonight. If there are no more questions, um, are there any comments about your training tonight? Do you guys feel a little more empowered and less afraid of what you can go out and do for yourselves? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. Good deal. That's what it's all about. And and you know, I teach a um, I teach a money club to both high school and uh, middle school. And I'm gonna say this: teach it to your children. Teach this to your children. When I was in the high school class and I was teaching them, they were so unlearned. But then as I started telling them how credit comes about and they're going to college and things that they needed to put in place and look for, those new credit cards that are coming and, and manage this and, and we looked at scenarios of money and how they can not get caught up like we have been, that, that was such an eye opener for those high schoolers, I'm telling you. And uh, all I do is encourage you to take whatever we're learning and implement it with your children. Don't spoil them so much that they don't know that they have a responsibility when it comes to money management. They got to know because they're going to end up in worse situations than us if they're ignorant. Because there's this, I mean, this world of, of economics ain't hardly getting that, that better. You get uh, Donald Trump and office and all crazy other people coming. Y'all, even the one that I'm going to vote for, I'm not pleased, but I'm going to cast my vote. But the biggest thing that I, when we were in recession, uh, we looked around at the My Econers and we were excited because it did not hurt not one of us. And I was glad to hear Ivy confirm that because uh, over the, the weekend conference that was held, because I still believe if we get in this thing and we do what we're supposed to do, help other people do the same thing. We're going to be a blessing to people. We're going to be a blessing to our families, and we can actually avoid some of the economic downfall that is about to happen in America. Okay? All right, you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. I will see you back here next Monday night, same back channel, same back time. God bless you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.